What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So today we're going to go in and we're going to use Hidden Geometry to create a bowl that has kind of some finger joints on it. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So the way this bowl is going to work is we're going to draw a circle with a certain number of segments and we're going to divide it up into pieces and we're going to draw the little finger joints in there. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to draw a circle. So we'll just use the circle tool in order to do that. And a 24 sided circle is fine. So just tap that C key, type in 24 and hit the enter key. And then we're just going to come in here and we're just going to draw our circle. So in this case, I'm just going to draw a circle with a one foot radius. But then what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to push pull this. Um, we'll go ahead and call it 12 inches high, just like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to turn hidden geometry on just like this. And you can see how when I turn hidden geometry on, this breaks this circle up into its individual faces just like this, because that's how SketchUp creates curved surfaces is basically by basically by segmenting um, flat faces along a curve just like this. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to come in here and we're basically going to select the perimeter of this circle just like this. You can double click just like this or just click on this face. And we're going to use the move tool to make a copy of this object, but we're going to move it down to here just like this. And then we're going to type in divided and we're going to type in a number like, we'll call it six for right now. And so what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to draw arcs along these circles just like this. So we're going to come in and we're going to draw half circle arcs. And you, when you use the arc tool, you can just come in here and first of all, you probably want to make sure these are actually going on this face because when I drew this, I don't think either one of these actually went on this face. You're just going to tap the A key and then uh, draw an arc along this face just like this. And so you want to move your mouse. You, you want to tap the A key and then click on these two points and then move your mouse until it says that it's on face and then move it until it says that it's a half circle just like this. And so what you're going to do is you're basically going to come in here and you're going to draw. Again, you have to make sure that you're on this face. But you're going to draw alternating half circles just like this so and actually once you've done two of these you can just select them and use the move tool in copy mode to copy this down twice so just type in times two just like that so now that you've got your arcs drawn in here what you want to do is you want to come in here and you want to turn these circle p or these lines back to hidden geometry so all you're going to do is you're just going to click on these lines just like this um, and then uh, hold the shift key and click on each one of them to select them all. And then you're just going to come up here and you're just going to select soften and you're going to select smooth. Up in the corner just like that. So you come in here, you select all of these and then in your entity info you're going to check the box for soft and you're going to check the box for smooth. And so what that's going to do is that's going to turn these lines into hidden geometry. So now if I come in here and I turn hidden geometry off, you can see how now all of a sudden, you can see how now all of a sudden those lines don't show up anymore. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to use the rotate tool to copy this um, along our circle a little bit. So if you remember, this is a 24 sided circle and we want eight of these segments or we want eight of these segmented pieces. And so if this is 24 segments long and we want eight of these, then each one of these needs to be three segments long in this circle, just like this. So you can see how you've got one, two, three segments. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the rotate tool in copy mode to copy this all the way around our object. So just come in here, select your arcs just like this, and then come over here, activate the rotate tool and click on this center point. And then you can see how if you leave this in move mode, it's gonna mess everything up. You don't wanna move that geometry. You wanna tap that control key to put this in copy mode. And then you wanna move your mouse over three segments just like this. So you're gonna come over here and you're gonna click to set your second point where you wanna move this segment to and then type in times and type in eight and hit the enter key. And what that'll do is that'll create eight copies of this all the way around your object. So now what you've got is you've got each one of these in here as individual geometry that you can come in and apply materials to or do whatever you want with. 
so for right now we've got we've gone ahead and we've got each each one of our little jointed pieces well now what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete out this top part just like this and we can go ahead and delete out the bottom for right now as well because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna use joint push pull which is an extension that allows you to push pull curved faces um, in order to give this some depth so all we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here we're gonna select everything and then we're just going to come in here to Joint Push Pull, which you could download from the Sketchication website, and I'll link to that in my uh, notes below. But you're just going to come in here and you're going to select the Joint Push Pull option, just like this. And you can see how when I move my mouse over this, um, it tells me that basically I can push pull all of these faces. But you're just going to click and drag this out a little bit in order to give this some depth. So in this case, We'll go ahead and give it probably a half inch, just like this. So you can see how what that did is that came in here and that basically gave this some depth. So, and one thing you're gonna wanna make sure that's selected when you do this is if you look up here in the option for finishing, there's an option in here that says thicken, which says keep original face in reverse if necessary. You're gonna wanna make sure that's clicked when you do this because what that'll do is that'll leave your interior geometry just like this as well. So then you can come in here, now that this has a thickness, this will have an outside face and an inside face just like this. And you can see what this did, is this did come in here and it unhid all of your lines just like this. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna turn perspective off. Well, when you turn perspective off, what that means is now you can come in here and you can select each one of these lines just like this without having to worry about accidentally picking up another face on the back side or anything like that um, because now there's um, no perspective meaning this is just like a straight up and down view so that means you can come in here with your mouse and select these really easily so you're just gonna come in here you're gonna select all of these objects just like this and you're gonna check soft and smooth again just like it was before and then you can turn perspective back on but now you can see how these are kind of broken up into their individual faces and stuff like that and one other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna draw a line across just like this so that I can break these up into their individual edges and then I'm gonna use the rotate tool so what we'll do is we'll come in here we'll draw that line and then we'll use the rotate tool in copy mode to create a copy of that line and then we'll type in times eight in order to repeat that all the way around here and then all that's going to do is that's going to break this up into its individual pieces now when we come in here and we um, apply materials to this this will look more natural with the materials in here so now that we've got this face kind of in here like this what you can do is you can come in here and you can fill this bottom face back in and you can go ahead and select reverse faces if you want to but all we're going to do here is we're going to push pull this bottom piece just like this and then we're just going to double click to select our bottom face and we're going to use the scale tool in uniform mode just like this to come in here and we're just going to give this a little bit of taper here on the bottom so just select this face with the scale tool uh, click one of the corner points and hold the control key to scale this in or out uh, uniformly around the center just like this and so if you want this face on the bottom to be smooth you can come in here and select all of these lines just like this and then select soften and smooth up here in the entity info that'll smooth this into an individual face and so now what we're gonna do is we'll go ahead and leave the outside of this face facing down for right now so then what you're gonna do is you're gonna come in here with each edge piece and just draw a line and uh, remember that this center point is actually under the origin so make sure you draw that line on that face just like that but then once you've done that you're gonna come in here and you're just gonna use the rotate tool in copy mode again you'll type in times 8 and what that'll do is that'll break this up into this individual geometry just like this because what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue our materials down so what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna come in here and we're gonna apply materials to this object and so in order to do that what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna find our two uh, wood veneer options 
over here in our materials section. So just open up the materials section of your tray and then we're gonna use this wood veneer one and wood veneer two, um, at least for now to give this kind of our, uh, our alternating wood material look. So we're just gonna come in here and we're just gonna apply this just like this. And for right now, this material doesn't look very good because it's not sized properly. So don't worry about that. We're gonna go in here and change that in a minute. For right now, we're gonna go ahead and just apply this just like this to our different materials. So just come in here and apply, or to our different faces. So just come in here and just apply that for right now. And you can see how that material is gonna come in here and that's gonna be on all of those faces. Well now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come over here to edit. And we're just gonna change this material's texture size from six foot to one foot. And you can see how when I did that, this came in here and that resized that texture material so that it fits better on this shape just like this. So now that we've done that with this one material, we're gonna come in here and do the same thing with our remaining faces using this other material. So and then the one thing we didn't do is we didn't segment this outside piece. So probably we'll just draw a line in here real quick. Um, it should be real quick to segment this with the copy or the rotate tool in copy mode. So we'll go ahead, come back in here and color the remaining faces. All right, so once you're, you have your materials um, applied, basically there's one other thing you can do to come in here and make this look a little bit better. Because if you look right now, it's kind of choppy um, just because it's segmented and all that. And uh, we can't, there's some stuff we can do about that, but uh, generally speaking, I mean, you can just do this with more uh, more segments in your circle in the future if you really want this to be kind of smoothed out. Um, this doesn't seem to work the way that we uh, kind of did the last one where we came in here with sub D just because these objects get kind of uh, messed up a little bit. But what you can do is you can come in here and you can select your objects and then you can right click. And there's, there's an extension that I have installed that I use a lot called Selection Toys. And that basically allows me to select um, a whole bunch of different things depending on what I want. So what I'm going to do in this case, and I'll link to that in the notes below, is I'm just going to right click and I'm going to select and I'm going to come down to this option it gives me which is Select Only. And I'm going to say Select Only Edges. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make sure smooth is checked because what happens is right now SketchUp treats all of these as segments like this and they're kind of choppy. But if you come in here and you select smooth, what that's going to do is that's going to come in here and that's going to try to take these faces and make them kind of merge together a little bit better. So it makes them look a little more... Um, a little bit more realistic instead of just being like, instead of just being like, um, you know, just kind of these choppy faces in here, just like this. And the other thing you could do if you really wanted to is you could probably come in here and select the edges on your arcs, just like this. So you could come in here, select the edges on your arcs, and then for whatever reason, this doesn't seem to want to select the top ones, but you could come through and you could select all of these like this. Then come in here and use selection toys to deselect the faces so you just have the edges. So basically I've selected the edges of each one of these little uh, these little uh, finger joint pieces and you can just turn those to soft or to soft. And so what that'll do is that'll come in here and that'll turn these lines off so that this is a much more smooth face just like this. You can see how this is kind of in here as its own face. So in that way, you can come in here and you can make your bowl look a little more smooth like that as well. So anyway, that's where we're going to wrap up this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Did you enjoy this tutorial? Are you doing much with hidden uh, geometry modeling? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. Uh, if you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider visiting my support me page on my website. That link's right down below. It's also the SketchUp essentials.com slash support. That'll have everything from links to my Patreon page to some extensions that I'm kind of an affiliate for. Um, that'll just uh, help me offset the cost of running this channel. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.